Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and over the next few weeks, I'll be giving you a series of videos comparing, as I kind of did with the Nikon D850 and the Canon 5D Mark IV, I'll be comparing the, the Canon 5D Mark IV with the new Sony a7R III. And so, obviously, some of these comparisons are going to end up favoring the Sony, some of them will end up favoring the Canon, and that's, you know, somewhat the nature of where we are in terms of uh, the market right now in that... I don't think that there's necessarily a clear leader in all categories, but certainly there's a lot of parity across the board, but there are also individual strengths of each camera system and uh, each brand. And so today we're going to look at, we're gonna start by looking at something that a lot of people have been asking me about that has a lot to do with what is perceived as being a strength for the Canon system, and that is color science. And when I refer to color science, I refer to just the way that the camera actually records and renders colors. And so uh, today we're going to look at um, kind of some static comparisons along with a few kind of portrait type comparisons so we can take a look at skin tones and we can evaluate whether or not that perception about Canon color is in fact accurate. And at the same time, of course, evaluate how Sony is doing here with the new a7R III. So let's jump in, let's look at some images see what we discover. Okay, so uh, we're going to take a look at the color science out of both the Sony here on the left and then the Canon 5D Mark IV on the right, A7R III on the left. There's a lot that is made over Canon's color science and how it is superior. And so what I've done here is I've used the same lens on both cameras. I've used the Sigma MC11 adapter on the Sony. I've used the Zeiss Milvis 135mm f2. I use this lens because it is Number one, it's one of the best lenses out there, period, but also because uh, Zeiss does an incredible job of giving a color neutral lens. And so I think it's a great uh, frame of reference. And so as you can see, what I've first done is just allowed both cameras to pick their auto white balance for this image. And, and so as a result, we have an image that really is not terribly far off. But what we do see here in the, you know, kind of metallic tones of this vintage camera body is we see that there is just a slight bit more of a green cast to the, uh, the Sony image, while the Canon image is, you know, I think it's, I think it's more neutral in my, my opinion. Um, it's not, you know, some people say, oh, Canon just skews red, but I'm not seeing necessarily a skewing towards red here. I'm seeing really a more accurate metallic tone, whereas the Sony has just a little bit of a green cast to it. Now, if we look at uh, over here at some of these colors that are rendered here, of course, you know, having the ability to look at the B, the original, I can tell you that the, you know, the, the colors um, out of the, the Canon are maybe just a little bit more accurate because there isn't any kind of cast uh, to it. Now, if we were to look at the neutral area here, um, kind of the defocused area, uh, you know, for whatever reason, all that are exposed the same, it seems like the uh, Sony image may be a, just a hair brighter, so the black area looks a little bit blacker. Let's take a look also at this area here. And once again, what we can see just looking over at this area is that there's just a little bit more of a neutral color rendition out of the Canon. Now where things got interesting is when I set a custom white balance in both cameras and on both of them, because I knew the color temperature of the lights that I used, I used a Kelvin uh, setting of 5300 for both cameras. And so as you can see, even with both of them having a Kelvin value uh, set into them, kind of a custom white balance, you can see that there's definitely a difference. And whereas the Canon, of course, is more consistent with what we originally saw in color, the, uh, the Sony color is actually assumed even more of a kind of a green tint to it. And uh, that kind of interested me because I would have thought that they would actually have been closer um, with the custom white balance set in there, but that is not the case. If anything, I think that Sony did a pretty fair job of allowing those uh, kind of coming back to neutral with the auto white balance. Now, if we look here, just looking at this at a kind of a brighter level, you can see that on Mario's face here that the, uh, the skin tones just are, as a result, they're just a little bit cleaner looking, um, and some of that has to do with the tint there. And we can also see that some of these colors just look a, 
they're not necessarily oversaturated. It's a little bit more about accuracy, I would say. And there is, uh, you know, similar saturation levels, and but the end result isn't quite the same. So is it possible to get, you know, basically Canon colors out of a Sony body? Well, I did just a little bit of tweaking here in Lightroom, uh, trying to find, you know, as close a balance as I could. And a lot of that involved adding um, kind of more magenta tint into the, uh, the Sony and also um, lowering the black level a little bit to uh, match the, uh, the contrast punch out of the Canon. And I think that here we've got a pretty close result here. Um, if not identical, it's certainly, I think, very, very close. And so I think that the answer is yes, you can uh, get equivalent color, um, but it may take a little bit more work to achieve that. So what about faces? I used the uh, Sigma 85 millimeter f1.4 art on both of them, a very good portrait lens. And so as you can see under similar conditions shooting outside here, you definitely get a different look uh, to the skin tones on both of them in terms of the basic color cast. Um, it's not the same. And in here, um, it's, it's hard for me to describe this, but um, there's definitely probably, it's probably more that green cast that is there. Whereas the, the Canon skin tones, as you can see there, they're a little bit paler, yes, but I think that they're also a little bit more neutral in terms of the color. And so as you can see, I mean, both of them, you know, both results look look good and if you weren't looking at them side by side you know you wouldn't necessarily say one is better than the other but there certainly is a difference so if i equalize color balance here as much as possible to see how our result evens out we can see that you know in both cases it's it's still not quite all things being equal here and um, just there's just a little bit more of a tent there and we've seen that just changing the white balance doesn't necessarily uh, do the trick on the Sony. You need to infuse a little bit more magenta into it for one thing to help to offset some of that green cast or bias. Now in this case I purposely entered in a cooler white balance um, for this setting and so kind of an overcast day and I went with kind of more of a daylight type and so in this case that actually produces a cooler result and so what we can see is that if we um, look at the two of them side by side, the, the funny thing is, is that in some ways the, the Sony has actually skewed a bit cooler than what the Canon has. And, um, and so that's kind of interesting considering our previous result. And if we look at uh, the kind of skin tones here, there's definitely more of a, um, you know, a, a kind of a magenta or cooler cast here to the Sony. And so in this case, we still haven't really nailed, you know, good skin tones per se. We've actually ended up with an overly cool result um, compared to the more neutral result from the Canon. So if we take that exact same image now and we, you know, we kind of warm it back up um, since the raw files, we can do that. What we see is that we, you can see now that there's that kind of magenta, magenta cast that was there to the Sony has remained, of course, even as you've brought that up. And so, uh, you know, again, it's, it's, it's different. Um, they're not quite the same. And this may be a taste thing. I, I suspect those of you that shoot Nikon will look at the Sony skin tones and they'll look, you know, maybe basically right to you because I found that the A7R 3 and the D850 were closer in terms of this than what the Canon was. If you're, you know, a familiar Canon shooter, you may look at that and say, that's better, that's more accurate. And, and so certainly the results are different. And by the way, yes, the exposure values, for those, those of you that try to say it's gonna be exposure value, the exposure values weren't identical, but I have equalized the histograms on both of them. And so, um, and it was, it's minor enough that it, this hasn't impacted the image. And so it's, it's more about the difference in the actual color science than it is um, basically regarding any kind of exposure variation here. So as you can see, at least in, in my perception, um, is that I think that Canon still has the advantage, particularly when it comes to skin tones. And I think, although I, I use the analogy, a uh, green kind of tension, in some ways it's, it's almost a bit of a yellow bias in skin tones that uh, makes them not just feel warmer per se, but 
in some ways the the areas that should be skin toned kind of skew a little bit yellow. Now again as I mentioned in the you know kind of the comparison video while we're looking at the photos that I think that in a vacuum um, you know I don't think that you would notice that so much. Let's just say you're out at, I mean I mean by the way I, I have no dog in this fight. I own the 5D Mark IV. I've got my order in uh, for the beginning of February for an A7R3 and so um, I'm not out trying to bash either system. My plan is is to shoot both of these cameras and both of these systems side by side and so I don't think that I have a, a bias although I'm sure that there will be some of you that will accuse me of having one. But I, I just think that if you were out and you were shooting, and I intend to be shooting portraits with the A7R 3 I love IAF. I think it'll do great for that. But I think that if I were to just take images, as I have here, you know, equal things out with the lens choices. And so it just comes down to the way that each camera interprets the color of a given scene. I do still favor Canon's color science. And I, I think that in this case, we've seen once again that Canon's reputation for really doing skin tones very well um, is justified here. And, and so I, I think that there are ways, obviously, to in post-processing or even in the way that you use um, kind of custom color profiles or custom white balances, maybe I should say, um, as a part of the shooting process that you can get fantastic color out of this Sony a7R 3 And as we're going to see as we continue in this series, there are obviously some tremendous sensor advantages that do exist for the Sony when compared to the Canon. But in this first segment and then this first evaluation, I think that Canon still comes away with a win for having really good, really accurate color that uh, I find that in post-processing gives you a little bit more versatility because if you're starting off with a good and balanced color science, it allows you to then uh, kind of go and play with that color without things skewing as much as we saw when we went with the cooler image and we warmed it up, for example. And so uh, anyway, just something to uh, bear in mind if you're evaluating systems and if you're a portrait photographer, for example, or someone where that where color science is going to be very important for you, uh, that's certainly something to bear in mind as you're evaluating these systems. I'm Dustin Abbott, and as I've mentioned, stay tuned because I will have a lot more coverage coming from the Sony a7R 3 a camera that I'm really enjoying in a lot of ways. And uh, so stay tuned for that. You can also see an image gallery from the A7R 3 where I've got lots of photos from a lot of different applications, APS-C mode, adapted lenses, native lenses, the, you know, 24 to 105 F4G, which I just released a uh, first look beginning of the review at, all of those things. So stay tuned for uh, those things and there'll be a lot more coverage coming your way. If you haven't already, please click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.